Today I'm going to show you our first reaction. Really quick though, what can react? Let's look at pentane. It's another saturated hydrocarbon with a bunch of carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen single sigma bonds. These are very stable bonds that don't want to break. It takes a lot of energy to break them, about 100 kilocalories per mole for the carbon-hydrogen bonds and about 90 kilocalories per mole to break the carbon-hydrogen bonds. That means they're happy where they are, they don't want to react with anything. Now you might be thinking, wait, it does undergo combustion. I know that for sure. Boom! Yeah, you're right, it does. But that's not such a valuable reaction for organic chemistry. It reduces the complexity of the molecules that you have to work with. Think about it this way. Nature had to do a lot of work to make that pentane, and now all you have is CO2 and water. So as you might have guessed, what we want to do is increase complexity, or at least not drastically decrease it, to get what we want. To do that, we'll need bonds and electrons we can play with, not like pentane. Are you ready for this? Alkenes! Hydrocarbons with a double bond. That's something we can play with. Hopefully you're familiar with this notation, as well as wedge and dash notation. That means one bond going up, one bond going down. Now let's draw some p orbitals. They're shaded like this. There's one electron in each. Not in the top or the bottom, just one each. Now because these wave functions are the same shape and next to each other, there's some overlap, so the electrons actually exist between the two, and that's a bond. So we have accessible electrons, there and there. Yay, oh my gosh, I'm so excited, yay! So what can we do with these? Well, let's find out. Say we had this alkene in the presence of HCl, gas. Now here's our p orbitals, one electron in each, and the bond exists between the middle. Now, for HCl, chlorine is pulling much harder on its bond electrons than hydrogen due to its electronegativity. What happens is that these two bond electrons, yes, both of them from the alkene, come and bond with the hydrogen. That in turn gives both of its shared bond electrons with chlorine all the way to chlorine, forming chloride ion and this carbocation. I haven't drawn the plus charge yet. Oh geez, egregious. The notation in organic chemistry for two electrons moving is a double barbed arrow. You'll see it all the time, it's very common. What's less common is radical chemistry in which only one electron moves. In that case, you use a single barbed arrow. But we don't need to talk about that right now. Back to this reaction. This is what we have so far. This is our molecule with the hydrogen added. There's an empty p orbital right there. There are no electrons in it, so there's a positive charge. That's weird having a positive charge on a carbon. Oh wait, we have a negative to pair with this crazy carbocation. The chloride anion transfers two of its electrons to create a bond with this carbocation, giving us this product, 2-chloro-2,3-dimethylbutane. And of course, you name it by finding the longest carbon chain. So it's four carbons. But is the root. Two methyls on the two and three positions. Chlorine is highest priority in the two position. So 2-chloro-2,3-dimethylbutane. Now you know the basics of hydrohalogenation of alkenes. Thanks for watching.